Houston, we have a problem. Five words indicating something has happened that we are not prepared for. As human beings, we love to be prepared for disaster. That is why we have insurance. I have homeowner's insurance. Insurance on my insurance. I have flood insurance, which I thought was nonsense until this past week. And then I have auto insurance, and then I have motorcycle insurance, and I'm very up on this right now because they all became due this past month. And then we have savings. Savings because we are preparing for a rainy day. And sometimes, no matter how much we prepare, we're not prepared. Uh, some things just happen. Now, I am a movie buff. And one of my favorite scenes in any movie is from the movie The Christmas Story. The father is sitting there in the living room, and he's reading the newspaper after all the hustle and bustle of the morning activity with the kids. And the commentary says, when all's right with the world, when you least expect it, something can happen. And on the other side of the newspaper that's blocking his view are the Bumpus' dogs coming in from next door. Now, this is from the rowdy neighbor, and he hates these dogs. Well, the father is really looking forward to the Christmas turkey, and then he hears a commotion in the kitchen, and in a millisecond of time, their Christmas dinner is completely gone, just a bone or two left on the floor. Another movie is Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump, the movie, takes place one of the major scenes in the Gulf of Mexico right off here. They're in a fishing boat. It was Forrest's dream to start a shrimping business. Well, he went out there in his one boat that he had, and he didn't have any success at all, even though he had his helper from Vietnam that he had saved, Lieutenant Dan. And then a hurricane comes up in the Gulf. And it is whipping that boat around, and the boat is rocking up and down, and Lieutenant Dang, Dan gets up there on the mast of the fishing boat, and he's shouting at the storm, and he's shouting at God, and he's so angry. He says, come and get me. And, of course, he survives. Not only does he survived, but they're the only boat left standing. And therefore, they have cornered the shrimping business. And they both became millionaires. We try so very hard as human beings to be prepared for the worst. In spirituality, it is the opposite. We must become prepared for the very best. Knowing that with God, the very best will come even when we cannot see it in the moment with our eyes. This lesson is the opposite of being prepared in a way, and then in a way it's not. It is the ultimate preparation. It is to be pre-prayed for every situation in your life. Prayer is a power beyond what we know. It is accumulative. It is growing. And it is self-generating. How many times have you been fully prepared for a situation. Well, many times, no matter what we do, we're only a half prepared or less. But when you become pre-prayed in every situation, it is a kind of 
secret mystery. The secret that you and I are wondrously made in the image and the likeness of God. Knowing our oneness and being pre-prayed every single day is a wondrous thing. It changes life. It is a mysterious process that begins to accumulate and build you. It strips away our human ignorance. It takes away our human arrogance. And it reveals what is already there. Something miraculous in you and in you and in you. Dorothy Bernard said correctly, courage is fear that has said its prayers. Prayer changes you. Martin Luther said, pray and let God worry. I like that. The traditional way that we hold prayer is that we're going to somehow convince a reluctant God to do things better, to make some kind of promise to God. God, we say, if you'll help me this one time, just once, win this golf tournament, I promise God, I will pray every day and every night for the rest of my life, as if such a statement could influence or move a reluctant God. The kind of prayer that I am talking about this morning is a kind of understanding, a deeper principle, a knowledge. The kind of prayer that I'm speaking about is a prayer that moves God power in and through you. It is the way electricity moves when you turn on a switch. If we allow the connection to be made, the electricity will flow. The lamp will light up. True prayer makes the connection, ourselves with God, so that divine electricity can flow and there is greater light in our lives. The true purpose of prayer is to make the connection with the connection. You may have heard the old story about the ship out in the sea. And it's being tossed about, let's say in a hurricane, and a woman passenger comes up to the captain and says, Captain, I'm worried. And he says, Ma'am, he says, right now I would suggest that you think about God and you pray. And she holds her head in her hands and says, Oh my God. Has it come to that? <laughs> Prayer, as a last resort, is traditional prayer. We must think of prayer first, not last. We must think of prayer ahead of the need. We must have different ideas of prayer than just begging and beseeching. We must have a different idea of prayer that bargains with God, that is manipulative with God. I'll do something for God if, if God will do something for me. What about the kind of prayer that moves God power through us? What about the kind of prayer that gives us the power to live our lives better, happier, more fully, with divine help. Abraham Lincoln is reputed of telling a story of chopping down a tree. And he said, if I had eight hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend six hours sharpening my axe. He said, most poor fools would spend the entire eight hours hacking away, exhausted, at a tree with a dull axe. Well, prayer is sharpening your axe. First thing in the day that changes everything. 
There's something about a human being that wants to get on and get into the busyness of life. <clears throat> we think that we have to get out there first thing in the morning and do it all. When what we need to do first thing in the morning is step back and to go to God and to allow God power to come through us and to do everything that we need to do in our busy day with us. That's when great power can flow. Our minds become clear, we begin to function better, and just like a sharp axe functions better than a dull axe, we are pre-prayed and anxiety lowers and stress decreases. And we are able to function at a much higher rate than the human body and the human mind working alone. Martin Luther put it this way. He said, I have so much to do today that I'll need to spend another hour on my knees. Basically, that's the point that we're talking about here. Eric Butterworth uses the image of a radio frequency to describe prayer. He said, God is like a radio frequency. In other words, divine energy is filling this room just as radio frequencies are. We really can't hear the radio waves, but they're here in this room right now, permeating the air right now. In order to hear them, we need a receiver. Well, we are the receivers of God, God's divine energy. To hear a particular frequency, we have to tune to that frequency. 750 kilocycles can't be heard unless you tune to the frequency. 150 kilocycles, then you hear the voice and the music clearly. But if you tune to 748 or 749, you'll just get static. You have to tune yourself to take the time and to become one with God. A holy man was once asked, Sir, they said, how do you maintain your serenity and peace in the face of all the pressures that are in your life? And he replied, I never leave my place of prayer. Now, he did not mean that he sat in prayer all day long because he had a busy monastery to run. What he meant was that his inner experience of prayer, which he found in his time of going within, was carried with him throughout the day. If truth be told, the true purpose of prayer is not the peace the serenity or contact we make while sitting there with our eyes closed. The real purpose of prayer begins when we get up, when we open our eyes and when we go out into our day. That is when we express the fruits of God that came in our prayer. Our prayer becomes a living thing and it fills our lives, and it enriches other lives because it pours forth from us, because we go into our day pre-prayed. Dr. Alexis Carroll said, prayer is not only worship, it is an invisible emanation of a human spirit. The most powerful form of energy that can be generated. The influence of prayer on the human mind and body, he said, is as demonstrable as the secreting glands. Now, Dr. Carroll said, as a physician, I have seen men and women, after all other therapy has failed, be lifted out of disease and melancholy by the supreme effort of prayer. It is the only power of nature Prayer is the source of luminous and self-generating energy. Prayer is accumulative. It is growing. And it pays interest with 
spiritual dividends inside of us. Prayer has the power to, to counteract the pull of the five senses, what Jesus called the appearances. When you have God power come through you, you know it's more powerful than anything you see or sense with your eyes. A man tells this story. When I was a teenager, I was given a watch that had to be wound by hand. It was a high-quality watch, but one day it did actually break down. I decided I would try to get it fixed, so I took it to a jeweler, and he looked at it, and he said, My, that's a high-quality watch. He was very impressed. And he said he would fix it, but he also looked me straight in the eyes and said, but you need to keep better care of it. And he said, what do you mean? I've always taken good care of my watch. He said, you need to always wind this watch, whether you're wearing it or not, first thing in the morning, because it will help the watch deal with the stresses of the day. It will last longer. It will be a better watch. Well, naturally, he said, I gleaned something else from that message, another meaning about the inner winding of ourselves. When we spend time in prayer, first thing, we're better able to withstand the stresses of the day, and we're fundamentally better people. Let me tell you a story. There was a lover that knocked on the door of his beloved. Who knocks? said the beloved from within. It is I, said the lover. His beloved replied, go away. This home will not hold you and me. Well, the rejected lover went into the desert. and There he meditated for months on end, pondering the words of his beloved. And finally, he returned to the door again. Knocked on the door. Who knocks? It is you, was the answer. And the door opened immediately. You see, it is not really God and you or God and me. It's just God. That is the secret to opening the inner door. It is just God. God is manifesting, surrounding you, and through you. There is really no separation between you and God. There is a oneness that Jesus talked about. You are one with God this very moment. In Ephesians 1.9 it says, God has made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of God's will. What is God's will for you? It is to know more of God on a personal first name basis to be acquainted with God daily. God is our life. God is our intelligence. God is our essence. God is our health. Nothing can be added unto us. Everything is already within us. You are equipped as a child of God with this. And prayer is simply the recognition of this power. Martin Luther King, Jr. said to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. One of the highest levels of prayer can be understood from the word from which the word prayer came from. The word is patel. Patel. Patel means literally judging 
yourself as wondrously made. That is what we are to do in prayer. We judge a holy and wonderful God. We know that we're one with God. And we feel that infilling happen in our awareness. When we are tempted as a human being to focus on lack because of our five senses, to come from a position of powerlessness, instead we can truly pray. We can turn to God and do it until we begin to feel it, the stirring of the Spirit within. And when that happens, we begin to understand who we really are. We are not pitiful creatures begging some supreme being for some pittance. We are children of God. Allow me to share a piece of poetry with you called The Difference. I got up early one morning. I rushed right into the day. I had so much to accomplish that I didn't have time to pray. Problems tumbled about me. and Heavier came each task. Why doesn't God help me, I wondered. And God answered, you didn't ask. I wanted to see joy and beauty, but the doy day toiled gray and bleak. I wondered why God didn't show me, and God said, you didn't seek. I tried to come into God's presence. I used all the keys in my lock, and God gently and lovingly chided me, my child, you didn't knock. So I woke up early this morning, and I paused before entering my day. I had so much to accomplish that I had to take time to pray. Commit first every day. Wind your inner watch first. Be pre-prayed.